The dam of information on Big Navi is starting to develop some pretty serious cracks, and the leaks are providing a bunch of information related to the number of compute units, clock speeds, power phases, and memory bus. What does this mean for the RX 6000 series, and how will it compete with the RTX 30 series? Let's get into it. So everyone is talking about stream processors, compute units, game clocks, boost clocks, power phases, and blah blah blah. Those specs are nice and everything, but what does it mean to performance? How is the 6800 and 6900 going to perform against a 3080 and a 3090? Based on a leak provided by video cards, we now have an understanding of the lineup to be shown at AMD's event on October 28th. The lineup is the RX 6900 XT with 80 compute units, the RX 6800 XT with 72 compute units, and the RX 6800 non-XT with 64 compute units. 64 compute units? I did not see that version coming. Even in my video in September, I was thinking the RX 6800 non-XT would just be a lower clocked version with 72 compute units. Rather, it's a lower clocked version with 64 compute units. I didn't consider it since it didn't make sense in how a 64 compute unit card would compete in the lineup, and I'm still not sure. But I was thinking, could it be the gorilla in the room? I'll get back to that later in the video. Back in my video in late March, I said, Nvidia has been working with TSMC for all of their releases for more than a decade. Why would they not continue to use TSMC? It is not a trivial thing to just jump over to another company's fab. It's a bigger deal than most people think. And I showed that Big Navi has a chance to take the crown away from Nvidia. For Big Navi to win, I said, For Big Navi to win, I think it will take a mishap on the manufacturing side, which I mentioned earlier, jumping to another company and fab is not trivial and does pose a risk. Let's get back to performance. Going back to the time spy charts that I started back in my video in July, when I wanted to figure out if a time spy leak was for a 3080 or something higher. At the time, I thought the highest card would be called the 3080 Ti, and we now know it's called the 3090. By the way, that time spy score turned out to be valid as a 3080 score, as I discussed in that video. We know the time spy scores for the 3080 and 3090 since they are released. And now, a leak on the 3070 shows that it is on par with the 2080 Ti as expected. We can then project where the 3060 Ti version would land, and with a straight line projection, it would come in at just over 12,000. I will say that I don't think it will scale that well. I would say that it is likely to score in the mid to upper 11,000 range and be very close to the 2080 Super. While it does bend off the straight line for the 3060 Ti, you can see that same trend in the Touring lineup. For our estimate for RX 6000 series, we'll need two data points. How do we get two data points? Let's start with what AMD showed on October 8th when they provided a sneak peek of Big Navi. We now know that they showed the performance of the 72 compute unit version and not the 80 compute unit version. From that, we can say that the RX 6800 XT 72 compute unit version is on par with the RTX 3080. But where do we get the second data point? When I heard the latest leak that the RX 6800 non-XT was 64 compute units, it triggered my memory to a leak back in August. In August, there was a leak that Mr. Cortex wrote about to say that Big Navi was not so big and that its performance was only 15% higher than a 2080 Ti. That didn't make any sense, and in my video in early September, I said that performance should be achievable with a 60 compute unit version. Now that we know that the RX 6800, non-XT, is in fact 64 compute units, then it makes perfect sense that the leak Mr. Cortex received was not wrong. He wasn't jebated. He just didn't have the full picture. He received a piece of the puzzle, which turns out to be the performance information on the 64 compute unit version. And that's the issue with leaks. We only get bits and pieces of information, like the pieces of a puzzle, how do you put them together to paint the picture that comes out to a rational conclusion? That's the tricky part. If we take the RX 6800 non-XT as 15% better than a 2080 Ti, we can now draw a line. We can then extrapolate to how an 80 compute unit Big Navi will perform in Time Spy, and the projection shows that it's close to, but comes up short against the 3090. We can also use this to project the performance of the RX 6700 XT, the card based on Navi 22, and to be launched in January, and you can see that it is very close to the 3060 Ti. 
but it does not get close to the 3070. So just like the RX 5700 XT competed with the RTX 2060 Super, the RX 6700 XT will compete with the RTX 3060 Ti. Now, with all the leaks about the super high clock speeds and considering that the one leak we're using is from last August, it is clear AMD is working feverishly to get as much clock as they feasibly can. If you remember back in January when they released the RX 5600 XT, they also worked feverishly to update the clock speeds to make it more competitive with the RTX 2060. If they do increase the clock speeds, I would expect around a 5% increase in performance. And if I just apply a straight 5% bump in all the scores, you can see the 6700 XT would edge out the 3060 Ti. The RX 6800 non-XT will crush the 3070. The RX 6800 XT would beat the 3080 by a few percentage points and the RX 6900 XT will be nipping at the heels of the BF GPU, the 3090. Unbelievable. This is going to go down right to the wire and it will depend on how successful AMD is with those clock speeds and how magical that 128 megabytes of infinity cache works across games. What about pricing? At the time of this video, I don't think AMD has even set the pricing. They may have a range, but not set actual prices. What I'm about to show is my speculation only and my reasoning. In my video in early March, after AMD's Financial Analyst Day, I predicted the 80 compute unit Big Navi to be priced at $999. I still hold to that value since I think the performance will be close to, within 5% of the 3090, but they will offer the best value. Remember, AMD wants to disrupt 4K gaming. You see, the 3090 is nothing more than NVIDIA's way to gauge if there is a market for even higher price graphics cards than the 2080 Ti. If they called the new card the 3080 Ti, then everyone would have been in an uproar. So to avoid that, NVIDIA just changed the name to a bigger number for a bigger price tag. Also, I think the willingness of people to spend $1,200 on a GPU surprised NVIDIA, and they decided to use the renaming technique to see if they could move that up to $1,500. If AMD charges more than $999 for the RX 6900 XT, then we will know that they have entered into full-on greedy mode, and us customers are in for an ever-increasing prices on the high end until both NVIDIA and AMD find that limit. With the RX 6800 XT slightly ahead of or trading blows with the RTX 3080, I can see AMD setting the same price at $699. You don't get DLSS and the same low of ray tracing, but you get 6GB more VRAM. In terms of pricing the RX 6800 non-XT, we have some insights into that value thanks to a tweet by Mr. Cortex back on September 4th. He quoted his sources saying that AMD wants to release the 16 gigabyte version at $599 with the eight gigabytes at $499. That 64 compute unit version is going to smoke the 46 SMs in the 3070. And if you are waiting for the 3070 16 gigabyte to be released in December, don't bother, since the recent rumors has NVIDIA canceling the 3070 with 16 gigabytes and the 3080 with 20 gigabytes. I think NVIDIA moved the 3070 release date to October 29th, one day later, to give them a chance to see how AMD will price the RX 6800 and if they offer a 6800 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM at 499. Then NVIDIA's only option is to reduce the price since performance won't be close. That reduction may have a cascading effect on price reductions to the 3060 Ti and then the 3060 as well. Think of it, if they drop the 3070 to 449, then the 3060 Ti and the 3060 would also have to drop in price to maintain that segmentation. Wow, that's the gorilla in the room. For me, the 6800 non-XT is the most interesting of the bunch. Maybe because I didn't see it coming, and I didn't expect AMD to put up 64 compute units against 46 SMs in the 3070. I was expecting something like 52 CUs like in the Xbox Series X that would compete more directly with the 46 SMs in the 3070. I think it's safe to say the 3090 will edge out the RX 6900 XT and the 3080 and the RX 6800 XT will trade blows. So your choice will depend on whether you want certain features or just the absolute highest end or maybe just what is available.
But having the 6800 non-XT that will be 90% of the performance level of the 3080 and have 6GB more of VRAM for 86% of the price? This is while beating the 3070 with its paltry 8GB by 15% at $499. I don't know about anyone else, but the 6800 non-XT card could be this generation's 2070 Super replacement. From a performance per dollar perspective, the 2070 Super was really good and a very good seller. This 6800 non-XT could just take its place. Like it if you learned something, share it, that really helps the channel. Subscribe for more. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.